Good afternoon. Welcome to the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart. Today's liturgy celebrates the feast of the Most Holy Trinity. Please stand for our opening hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather on this first Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost to celebrate another solemnity, that of the Most Holy Trinity. It is my aim today that you leave here with clarity of everything there is to know about this divine <laughs> mystery. So we could be here a long time, right? <laughs> On the contrary, um, I hope that we can delve deeper into our relationship with the Holy Trinity, not to figure them out. I, again, I, I like to always allude about like a friendship or a love. If you figure that person out, that's kind of boring, right? Rather, we be open to the mystery and, and delve deeper into our relationship with that person, knowing more and more that uh, they're always going to surprise us. Today, I pray that the Blessed Trinity surprise you. Let us acknowledge then our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful, gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in me will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, dear friends, it's an honor to be with you. There's a lot of you in here, by the way. Um, And it is good to see that we're coming then to the altar of the Lord. On the solemnity of the Most Holy uh, Trinity. At the outset, I I guess I said that I'm not aiming to necessarily prove the Trinity. I think uh, in some ways it's enough to know that Jesus' whole mission was to introduce us to the Father. Uh, And indeed, to to name God uh, by this familiar relationship, Abba, our Father, which was, again, prior to Jesus, really kind of unprecedented, that this almighty, uh, eternal, all-powerful, all-knowing God is now known by a name that is very familiar. And indeed, that was Jesus' aim to introduce us to the Father. Not only that, he introduced us to the Holy Spirit. After he ascended into the heavens, uh, he sent the Holy Spirit so that his presence will still be with us today. And so I always believe that our faith in the Holy Trinity has to have some effect in our lives, right? Dogma must somehow be reflected in the way that we live our lives. And I think perhaps I could do better by looking at some of the characteristics revealed to us uh, through tradition and through scripture of the Blessed Trinity that will have a direct impact in our lives. Uh, The first, I'll I'll, I'll go for three of them. Does that sound good? Yeah, okay, yes, Trinity, three. Um, Man, a little bit of theology, just a little bit, all right? So the Father, God the Father, is is so much love, so much goodness, so much mercy, right? 
that he necessarily outpours into other. Right? It's almost like it can hardly be contained. And so he begets Jesus. One in being, one same as substance, right? But somehow, because he is fullness of love, because he is fullness of grace, that is necessarily outpoured into other. That other then is revealed to us as Jesus Christ came in our human form uh, and still divine. Jesus, because he is of the same substance and dignity of the Father, likewise, can't help but offer his life for others. It's just his nature. God is outpouring his love and mercy. And so Jesus' whole life then was an outpouring, not only to the world, but a return to the Father. Okay. Are you with me so far? Okay. So he returns to the Father from whence he came. And in that showing us also our destiny, right? We came from God, we're going to return to God. So not only that, the Father and the Son are so much love, so much dynamism, so much power between the two of them that it brings out another, the Holy Spirit. Okay? That, so, so we have this relationship which is a, a dynamic, uh, some imagery that I could give you. If you think about the sun, right? We think of it as just kind of this, it's there, it's, it's hot, but when you look close enough, it's, it's, it moves, right? It's like this ball of gases. And it's, and it's this, if you look at it, the molecular, even bigger than molecular lever, probably one of those big bubbles that comes up out of the sun is bigger than the earth, right? It, it's, it's constantly moving. Even, and it's not to say that God is always changing, because on one hand, he's as firm as a rock. But even a rock at its molecular level it's moving, right? There's atoms that are like constantly moving. It doesn't look like it to us, but it's constantly at work. I think there's a Greek word called perichoresis, meaning like the choreography, the dance, that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are in this constant dance. You with me so far? So the Trinity is not so much something static up there, right? The Trinity is not just like a shamrock. Thank you, St. Patrick, right? It just sits there. I mean, it's like these three lobes. Okay. But rather, the Trinity is kind of like this. It's dynamic. It's active. It's, it's in motion. What does that say about us then? Our, our belief, our faith, founded on the Trinity, also must be active, also must be dynamic. I think too often we try to say, okay, I believe, and I made it. That's it. Period. End of story, let me just do what I do. That's not how life works, right? Life is always going to kind of throw us. And so we always have to make our faith fresh, right? People always kind of worry, I have no faith. I think that's because the Lord has rocked you off of your pedestal and says, find another one, right? He almost like makes us constantly search for him. Because as soon as you think you have faith, as soon as you think you figure God out, y'all hear this from me all the time, guess what? You got the wrong God. You got the wrong God. So our faith, like the Holy Trinity, must be dynamic. Another way of saying that, our prayer, our contemplation, must go into action. Right? It must be in relationship. That's number one, something that we will learn from the Trinity. Y'all with me so far? How many more do I have to go? Right. Number two, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is a community, right? It's a unity of persons. Uh, we can get into persons, and we can talk about what personhood means. Uh, it's enough to say that, gosh, that really gets complicated. It's just enough to say that they're uh, three distinct, but not separate, they're not separated. They're distinct, right? They have their own character, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but they're not really separate. They're really still one in being. But they're a community, right? What does that mean for us? Again, we must be in community. 
if the indwelling trinity is in us, we share that characteristic. No man is an island, we hear, right? We have to live out our faith in a community. I'm telling you what, it's been tempting during this uh, coronavirus to just like lock myself up in the room. It's, it's been kind of nice, you know? I'm afraid to tell people, I, my life is good right now. Like, nobody needs me, I don't need anybody, right? But truthfully, in that, as Father Jacob would always share, is we almost lost a little bit of ourselves, right? Not in some prideful way, like, I love to be needed. Yeah, not so much that. Um, but, like, I, my priesthood is not a priest unless it's, like, an active ministry, right? And that means, again, like, the, like Jesus Christ, poor, attempting, I don't say I do this perfectly, pouring myself out into others. And so we need community, right? It's how we live our faith. My faith has to be dynamic. It has to be active. Who do I pour that out? You can't love myself. So I'm loving other. And so we are necessarily, because of the indwelling trinity, community, family, relationship. That's two. Number three. Uh, Equal in dignity, co-equal in dignity, co-equal in majesty, right? We can talk about the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit being different, but guess what? They, they are equal in dignity. And this one uh, is going to be a little bit more harder for me to speak about. Um, in the context in which we are in, in which uh, racism is again kind of showing itself, um, let me uh, just allow me to maybe speak of my own experience, maybe that's the best way I can go, right? If you haven't noticed, I am a Filipino-American, okay? Sometimes too bad that means I'm not Filipino enough and it means I'm not American enough in some people's eyes, right? But rather what it's supposed to mean is that I'm an American of Filipino descent, okay? I think there are times in my life where I, where I hoped that nobody saw the color of my skin, right? Um, I think there were times in my life where maybe I felt like I just wanted to blend in with everybody, that I wanted people to see, to not see, to be colorblind. I think I'm past that. I'm now at a place where I'm a little bit more comfortable with who I am. I'm at a place where I, actually I do want people to see what color I am. I do want to pe see, I want people to see that I am a Filipino and American and all that that entails is complex. It's complex, but it's who I am. And, if, and for someone to say that I don't see that in you, that it kind of takes away a little bit of who I, am, who I am, right? If we put this in our religious context then, my dignity is actually that I am a son of God. That's where I get my dignity. I am a son of God. In much the same way, my Filipino Americanness is an aspect of that dignity, right? But my dignity comes from being a son of God, being co-equal in being the uh, co-equal in dignity with others. I'm not saying don't look at my differences. I want people to see my differences and see that the way I manifest what it means to be a person, a Christian, is different from others. That's okay. That's where we're, we're enriched. The opposite is to deny that of me, to deny my dignity, to deny, to think that because I'm different, I am not equal in dignity. And that's where we get into trouble. Okay. So the Blessed Trinity then reveals to us that by saying somebody is different or distinct doesn't say that they're better or worse. Right? Less or more. We, just like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit share the dignity of being God, so too do we share in the dignity of being sons and daughters of God. And if we are to reflect that in our lives, if we are to reflect that in our faith, if we are to reflect that into how we live our faith out, then we must see others of equal dignity. Again, I can't stress enough, I think we can, I think sometimes saying we're different embraces the richness of who we are. I'm not saying we're colorblind, 
that's to forget somebody and, and all that they, they stand for. But I think there's another way to incorporate all of this, again, reminding ourselves that we come from God and not just a static God, not just a God who sits up there alone. It's the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who invites us into an active faith in a community in which everybody shares the same dignity. And that, then, is what the Most Holy Trinity should mean for us. Let us now stand to profess the faith in which we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker. True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Together, as a community, we now lift our prayers to the triune God. For Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all religious leaders, that they may help us to accept more fully the indwelling of the Trinity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to violence in our streets and in our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elected officials and those charged with the common good will work to ensure the dignity of all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those in our community, that they may find comfort and healing through the Holy Trinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and will die today, especially those who may not have had much faith in the triune God, that they may find eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in our book of special intentions and for the silent intentions we hold deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, you have drawn us together as a community in your name and have given us the example of communal, communal love. Help us to draw closer to each other and to live together in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance, their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, a blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. Thank you. 
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord, o our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. The first uh, is that the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is, I think, the second Sunday in June, usually. It's, it's a moving, movable feast, but it's always on a Friday. And unfortunately, it comes during the summer, so we're not always doing it as we should, which is big. Um, and especially with the social distancing, we're going to find a way to do this maybe uh, uh, virtually, um, but what we're doing is inviting everybody to be aware that the novena to the Sacred Heart of Jesus then begins on the 11th. Is that how we do novenas? Friday, so it's like the Thursday before the Friday. Does that make sense? Nine days, novena. Okay, um, and so just be on the lookout uh, for that. We'll have a, a daily reflection uh, coming from us here, uh, as well as the prayers that are, I think, is also in, can be found in your bulletin. So that's the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, if anybody is watching and wants to come to church tomorrow in the middle of a tropical storm, um, at the moment we're not canceling, but we're just asking everybody to be, uh, be vigilant and figure out if it's even safe for you to come. It's pretty safe for me to cross the street. I think I'm okay, so I'll be here, okay? That's the point. Uh, tomorrow, 8 and 11. Uh, but again, if any of y'all feel at danger, please don't feel obligated to come uh, to Mass tomorrow. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.